Over the past number of decades, the United States has succeeded in revolutionizing the modern battlefield. Nowadays, weaponized lasers are being considered as ground-based defense options in order to combat enemy missiles instantaneously. In the next few decades though, we may come to see these weapons adapted for aircraft as well. In today's video, we are going to have a look at the weaponized lasers the US Air Force is equipping its aircraft with, and how this will all provide an edge on tomorrow's battlefield. Lasers came to us straight out of science fiction, much like many other types of technology now utilized on modern military platforms. It would prove difficult to try and figure out exactly how many authors have mentioned this kind of thing in their literary works. And then there are such popular franchises as Star Wars and Star Trek, which have only further fueled interest in the development of this kind of technology on the part of both scientists and ordinary everyday people. As a result, the most powerful countries of the world began to develop their own lasers, starting back in the 1960s. The idea of using weaponized lasers to intercept missiles was originally discussed in the United States during the time of the Strategic Defense Initiative SDI, also known as Star Wars. This was first announced by the 40th President of the US, Ronald Reagan, in 1983 and it ushered an era of complex research and experimental work all with the goal of developing a missile defense system ABM, with space-based elements. Amongst the options considered for SDI were anti-missiles, weaponized laser systems utilizing nuclear explosions, chemical lasers, orbital mirrors, ground lasers, neutral particle emitters, atomic buckshot, kinetic interceptor satellites, and railguns. It was not long, by the way, before the latter found its use on the US Navy warships. But in this case, the problem was the lack of energy. The only naval craft capable of producing sufficient enough energy to reach the desired level for a railgun are the Zumwalt class destroyers DDG-1000, whose baseline is 78 megawatts. This is actually more than what's required to operate the railgun. However, the Zumwalt has been phased out and today's engineers are now working to transform the technology developed for the DDG-1000 series for use with other US Navy warships, including the 9,000-ton Arleigh Burke class and the 16,000-ton Zumwalt. The problems associated with the missile defense system's creation were not limited to just the complex and extremely expensive scientific and technical issues but also socio-psychological ones, which are arguably the most important. The issue was with the idea of the constant presence of a powerful, all-seeing weapon up in space. This led the presidential administration to halt the development of the SDI program. Although with the arrival of George W. Bush a little later, work was resumed on the development of a missile defense system. America's leading companies in the development of weaponized lasers are currently tech giants Boeing, Northrop Grumman, and Lockheed Martin. In fact, one of the most famous projects for the creation of weaponized lasers was the Advanced Tactical Laser ATL program. Military engineers and scientists researched the possibility of installing high-energy laser weapons on the AC-130 gunship for use against ground targets in cities and other such areas, where minimizing unnecessary casualties and damage is vital. A chemical acid iodine laser, KHIL, with a power of 100 kilowatts, was used as a base. The estimated effective range was approximately 20 kilometers, and it weighs anywhere from about 11,000 to 15,400 pounds. The ATL was a smaller system than its predecessor, having originated from ABL, Airborne Laser of the 80s, which was intended to destroy enemy missiles during the acceleration phase. The ABL was also based on KHIL, which was created in 1977 and literally consumed $1,000 worth of chemicals with each shot of laser fire and radiation. In 1981, researchers successfully installed an ABL on a stratotanker KC-135 and succeeded in destroying five AIM-9 Sidewinder missiles, as well as a simulated cruise missile. The laser did have some significant drawbacks, however. 
These were not only the operating costs and the sensitivity, but the chemical burnout process also created turbulence under the aircraft, resulting in significant aiming issues. In 1996, a tactical blue beam laser was installed on the AC-130 Spectre and tested at the White Sands Proving Ground located near Fort Wingate, New Mexico. In 2007, the laser was installed on the C-130H Hercules and it was prepared for further testing and demonstrations a year later. In 2008, Boeing publicly announced the first high-energy chemical laser test run on Hercules. The test shot itself was controlled by the ATL beam steering system, which weighs about 12,000 pounds. The system zeroed in on its ground target and fired a 3x3-foot object at Kirtland Air Force Base, New Mexico. Only a little later, the Air Force Scientific Advisory Board decided that the ATL had no practical application. Making the decision to refine the technology and go with solid state lasers rather than chemical ones. The main reason behind this decision was the system's overall size. By being both smaller and lighter, solid state lasers could be deployed on more compact platforms. Therefore, in 2009, an ATL was successfully launched from the 46th NC 130H test wing in flight over the White Sands missile range, and the laser successfully hit a target located on the ground. That same year, Boeing and the US Air Force conducted yet another successful laser engagement of a ground-based target from an aircraft, but then discontinued the ATL. In parallel to this, the US Air Force and Boeing had worked on the YAL-1 throughout the 2000s. This experimental combat aircraft was developed based on the Boeing 747-400F, and its primary task was to intercept ballistic cruise missiles with nuclear warheads. One of the device's unique features was its ability to destroy missiles during the initial phase of the flight path. A chemical laser was installed in the nose of the aircraft, and in addition to the YAL-1 system structure, there was also the following. TILL track illuminator laser, intended for target detection and illumination, as well as adjustments of the laser optical system's parameters, whereby the targets are engaged and destroyed. BILL, beacon illuminator, used to compensate for atmospheric distortion. HEL, high energy laser, a six module combat laser, Development of the technologies was carried out simultaneously by several companies at once. Boeing Defense, Space, and Security provided the aircraft itself along with the command and control team, and systems integration processes. Northrop Grumman supplied the COIL, Chemical Oxygen Iodine Laser, and Lockheed Martin provided the bow turret and fire control system. The YAL-1 went on its first flight in 2002. From 2007 to 2009, active tests were carried out regarding the TILL illumination system, target detection and simulation, as well as the use of the laser in flight. During tests in 2010, the team successfully destroyed a liquid propellant ballistic missile over Point Mugu over the coast of Central California. The system quickly dealt with the first missile. With the second solid fuel ballistic missile, however, it struck, but did not destroy it. Nevertheless, eight days earlier, a report came out that the laser had managed to destroy an identical solid propellant rocket. In 2011, after 16 years of development at a cost of $5 billion, the project was closed down due to military budget cuts. The US Department of Defense viewed the development as costly and not fully applicable. By the time the concept was phased out though, they had managed to bring the laser power to just a megawatt. The aircraft was kept in an AMARG warehouse until it was eventually decommissioned in 2014 after all usable parts were removed. In 2013, the YAL-1 experience assisted engineers in conducting research on the use of this on UAVs flying above the maximum height of a converted jetliner. By 2015, the US Missile Defense Agency had begun developing a laser on a high-altitude UAV. 
Instead of a manned, chemical-fueled jetliner flying at 40,000 feet and firing a megawatt laser at missiles at a distance of several dozen kilometers, the new concept focused on an electric laser installed on an unmanned aircraft flying at 65,000 feet and firing at a similar power level on targets within a few hundred kilometers. Unlike the ABL, which required time for the crew to rest and chemical fuel to be replenished, the electric laser could generate energy from the fuel to fire off shots. As a result, the UAV with refueling and a laser has near inexhaustible endurance and firepower potential. The most modern example of a laser on an aircraft is the innovative SHIELD, self-protect high-energy laser demonstrator program, something which the bright minds of the glorious trinity, Lockheed Martin, Northrop Grumman, and Boeing are working on today. First launched in 2017, SHIELD's main mission is to revolutionize aerial combat by designing and developing high-speed, ultra-powerful laser weapons that can be mounted on American fighters. The program facilitates the development of the following three types of laser systems for fighters. Target illumination, self-defense, and the destruction of enemy aircraft. Lockheed Martin was tasked with the development of the LANCE, Laser Advancements for Next Generation Compact Environments Laser, while Northrop Grumman engineers are busy with the STRAFE Shield Turret Research and Aero Effects Control System. Meanwhile, Boeing is responsible for the LPRD Laser Pod Research and Development. Instead of the volatile chemicals used in the previous generation of weaponized laser systems, LANCE utilizes fiber optic cables to link beams of light together, thus generating dozens of kilowatts of power. Additionally, the modular design will allow a person to scale the power levels by adding or moving modules. The design concept consists of a suspended container with a high-energy laser capable of protecting the carrier aircraft from anti-aircraft missiles or missiles from hostile aircraft. One can safely assume that various surveillance equipment, including elements from the onboard defense complex, monitor the airspace around the fighter, instantly detecting missile launches and subsequently destroying them with the installed laser. To be specific, its task is to essentially blind the homing missile heads and burn their structural elements. As far as power supply goes, the laser is set to be equipped with rechargeable batteries and advanced supercapacitors. These will be charged from the onboard network of the carrier aircraft and will provide the weapon with the necessary impulse when fired. SHIELD was originally intended for tactical aircraft, which put certain restrictions on their size, weight, and power supply. According to representatives of Lockheed Martin, however, they now have the necessary technology stack to create a laser in the optimal form factor without sacrificing its power. In 2019, the US Air Force Research Laboratory conducted ground testing of the Demonstrator Laser Weapon System, DLWS, which is currently in use by the US Army. Several air-to-air -air missiles were successfully struck during the tests. Follow-on SHIELD laser tests were planned for 2021, but due to technical problems and the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, these were postponed until 2023. As stated by Jeff Hagemeyer, the program manager at the US Air Force Research Laboratory, the specialists needed to solve the problem of effective laser operations when flying at subsonic from 0.75 to 1.2 Mach and supersonic from 1.2 to 5 Mach speeds. Lockheed Martin noted that strong turbulent currents in the aircraft fuselage tend to disrupt the forces of the laser beam, resulting in power dissipation. In order to avoid this issue, the company introduced a complex series of deformable mirrors into the laser guidance system, which allow the aircraft to conduct almost 360 degree engagement of targets. Also, an equally important task is miniaturizing the laser to fit into the compartment and prevent the buildup of excess heat, which could cause the aircraft to overheat as a whole. Among the planes set to be equipped with lasers are the latest 5th generation F-35 Lightning II fighters, whose new F-35 Block IV modernization program includes improved engines capable of generating more energy. 
There are also the F-15 Eagle, F-16 Fighting Falcon, and F-22 Raptor. In addition to the fighters, the US Air Force Scientific Advisory Board is also considering aircraft from the C-130 family as suitable candidates for the installation of weaponized lasers, namely the AC-130J, which has a powerful generator capable of powering a modern solid-state laser. Rumor has it that a 50 kilowatt laser is intended for the F-15 Eagle, and a 100 kilowatt one for the F-35. And as for the AC-130J Ghost Rider, a very specific power of 60 kilowatts and an impressive weight of 2.3 tons were projected. This, by the way, is not much at all for this flying giant. On the list of candidates for laser training were the C-17 cargo plane, the B-2 Spirit Stealth Bomber, its successor B-21 Raider, and the B-52 Stratofortress Bomber. According to experts, installing laser weapons on board the latter will help defend it from enemy missiles. And by this, I do not mean blinding the ammunition guidance system in order to knock them off target, but actually physically destroy them completely. If airborne laser systems prove to be as viable and effective as expected, then future weaponized lasers could completely revolutionize aerial warfare. It would increase the survivability of fighters, bombers, and even tankers and transport aircraft when threatened by anti-aircraft missiles. Not to mention the fact that the lasers themselves are high-speed and high-precision weapons with an almost unlimited ammo capacity. Alongside with the development of lasers in the sky, other military branches have been engaged in their own development. For example, the US Navy is exploring the possibility of using a laser system aboard a Gerald R. Ford class aircraft carrier. At this point, is it even any wonder that a ship capable of generating 13,800 volts of electricity, which is three times that of the Nimitz class, will be utilizing the latest directed energy weapons? Weaponized lasers will almost certainly open up tremendous prospects for the US Army. While some usage problems still have yet to be overcome, an arms race using UAVs, hypersonic weapons, and lasers has most definitely already kicked off. Perhaps the future in which blasters are used is not as far off as we might think. When do you think we might witness lasers installed on the latest military aircraft? Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed today's video, go ahead and leave a like, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button to ensure you don't miss out on any future content. Thank you, and we'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.